this has become uh, sort of a popular progressive um, narrative. Um, I, I think it's silly, frankly, on a lot of levels. Um, uh, you know, this argument that a company, you know, that they should dispose of Instagram and WhatsApp or that the government should be able to tell them to do that, um, you know, under this line of reasoning that they bought the company knowing that it was going to, you know, help them become a monopoly, it's, it's just flawed reasoning. I mean, just, just to kind of um, frame it a little better, when Facebook bought Instagram, um, zero revenues, 12 employees, I think, uh, you know, I don't know how much money they're actually losing, but this was a cash flow burning business. They paid a billion dollars for that, and people looked at Facebook like they were insane. Um, a lot of folks on the show probably made that argument. They're like, why would they pay a billion dollars for a company that's got no revenues and, you know, 20 million users? And so now, you know, Facebook has obviously grown Instagram to being a billion and a half users, and it turned out to be a wild success. And now Chris is saying, well, they should, you know, they, they should dispose of that business. WhatsApp is, is you know, kind of a similar example. Um, they paid $20 billion for a business with no revenues, sure. um, no real the, business model. The point, though, that, that he's making is that this company has gotten way too powerful, and both Mark Zuckerberg, Sheryl Sandberg, and others on the executive team have proven time after time after time to be incapable of harnessing the power that they have and using it in the right way. You disagree with that? I don't think that's his argument. I think his argument is that... Well, that's part of the argument is that, that it, they're too powerful. Well, his argument is that they're too powerful, but um, you know, I don't really know what he's basing that on. There's, I mean, in his own op-ed, he provides examples of, I don't know, five or six other companies that they compete with. And the reality is that their market is, they're not a shoe in by any means. Like they're in an extremely competitive environment. YouTube has nearly 2 billion users that are competing head on with Apple on messaging, which is a big part of their business. Right, but the core of their business, they have a, this is a duopoly, right? Um, I mean, it's, I, I think it's more of an oligopoly. That? And then there's, there's this sea of smaller niche oriented networks like some zero. And you'd even put LinkedIn there as, as sort of being a more tailored focused network um, that, competes with Facebook. Look, any app that takes your time, you know, throughout, throughout the course of a day is competing with Facebook. Facebook. And this idea that there isn't any competition in the space, which is usually kind of where monopoly is kind of is that, crazy. He makes the point that there is not um, a, a, social, a social media platform of any relevant size or scale that's been able to launch since uh, the fall of 2011, which is almost a decade ago. And the reason why is because once somebody gets traction, Facebook very quickly decides we will copy them and kill them and we will freeze them out of our network. It's flawed reasoning. Okay, but flawed moving reasoning. away from that, how about the point that he makes that has nothing to do with competition, but that's about a company this irresponsible that refuses to do any kind of human curation over what kind of news is served so, so what to I'd two say billion on that, people. Like that so, one is so, more worrisome so, so to me. So what I'd say is that no company has invested more money into um, issues such as content moderation. But I think they're contracting it out to people who are making less than thirty thousand no, dollars on average, they, who are suffering from PTSD the, from looking at all the violence. But that's a, that's not an <laughs> issue. Let's do this. There's two issues here. One is breaking up of the company. The second is content moderation. The content moderation issue is an extremely complex one because you and I may disagree on what content okay. should live on the platform, what should be taken off the platform. Now, what's Mark done? He said, like, okay, governments around the, around the world, you tell me where the line is, and w I will moderate the content according to that set of rules. Has any government done that? No, because guess what? Our legislative, you know, representatives, like, can't figure this stuff out. So you can't blame Mark for, or, or the company for um, not getting content moderation right in every single case when we as individuals can't even agree, and as societies can't even agree on what, you know, like, should Alex Jones be allowed to post on Facebook is not a black and white question, right? Um, should there have been people who've said Trump shouldn't be allowed to tweet? It's not a black and white, you know, there's no, like, right answer to that, right? And so, I mean, look, the, I, I, I think the, the, this, this goal of, or the idea that they should break the company up, um, I think it's preposterous. But then with that, he threw, you know, he basically threw in, like, every complaint about the business um, without, uh, you know, really any separation. And there's just a lot of, like, sort okay. of conflation of issues here.